This video is all about explaining the modern day behavior of men considered members of the top 20th percentile in terms of physical and socioeconomic attractiveness and how they use that status to engage in concurrent relationships with many different women simultaneously. And we tend to call these guys Chad and, and Tyrone. And we can call this behavior polygynous behavior. So it's part of the polygynous mindset I've been talking about in the past few videos. It is part of what defines modern dating and mating in the West now as being dysfunctional and harmful to society due to the stress it causes large percentages of men and women. Of course, it doesn't cause stress to Chad and Tyrone. And that's why I've got down there that Chad and Tyrone are winning because they are really the big beneficiaries of the mating market now being quite polygynous. Now, the urban definition of Chad and Tyrone, these are physically tall, good looking guys who socioeconomically, they're doing well for themselves. They've got money somehow, whether highly educated, a good occupation or athlete or some other way that, you know, physically they got stuff going on that's really good. And socially, you know, they got social dominance, got some swag and they got some money in their pocket. Good car, nice place, things like that. Things women find attractive uh, in a man. Now, I just want to start off with um, why Tyrone has greater sexual leverage than Chad. So if you've seen some of my earlier videos from a few years ago, you know, I've done a lot of work with sexual behavior and low sex ratio environments. And this 2013 study, um, sex highlighted in red, sex poverty, sex ratio poverty and concurrent partnerships among men and women in the United States. Um, it looked at whites, Latinos and blacks. And as you see um, bolded, virtually all whites are living in a balanced sex ratio in America and pretty much most Latinos. So 95% of them are living in balanced sex ratio environments. However, 7.85% of blacks live in a balanced sex ratio, meaning over 90% of black Americans live in low sex ratio ecologies. And this gives desirable, attractive black men in the United States great sexual leverage to kind of get what they want in sexual romantic relationships, um, because it's a supply and demand from a sexual point of view. Uh, there's a small supply of desirable men, uh, but a great demand from a lot of black women in that community. So as we'll get into later on in the video, I'll show you how this really affects um, the mating structure and modification of sexual strategies in the black community in the United States. But let's start off with an understanding about um, an evolved psychological difference, sex difference between men and women. So the way we measure this difference is called sociosexuality. And as you see there, sociosexuality is like the urge, the desire, for sex and for casual sex and the desire to have sex with a variety of different people. Um, in research, cross-culturally, in different continents, cross-racial, ethnic groups, whatever, worldwide, men on average are higher in social sexuality. Doesn't mean you don't find women who are higher on it, but it's just much more men than women. You probably know that already, unless you've been living under a rock. You know men want sex more and they want to do it with more different people um, more as well. That's how you get prostitution. And this is how um, the porn industry is upheld and only fans, this is how they make their money. It's through the strength of the male urge for sex. It's just much, much stronger than women. As if let's say prostitution was dependent on women, uh, the whole industry would, would collapse. Uh, one of the big reasons is women don't have to pay for sex. They can always go and get it for free. But it's because the male urge for sex is so damn strong that a woman can always get it for free. Whereas the opposite is not true. Uh, an average or below average man, they can't go out and get sex whenever they want to because women won't have sex with them. They don't have that strong urge for sex. Even with a desirable, handsome guy, he has to go through some hoops a little bit to go ahead and, and, and get sex. But um, this has been found globally, um, the, the strength of sociosexuality is just a lot stronger in men. And this is critical to understand because it will explain why Chad and Tyrone's behavior is so different from, let's say, a very attractive woman 
her behavior just will not be the same as a Chad and Tyrone. So this is a part of male sexual psychology, which I've talked about in the two previous videos, along with the statement that men have evolved to have as many casual sex partners as possible. That evolutionary history of male sexual psychology is why for men worldwide, this statement regarding casual sex is true. This is the reason Chad and Tyrone will have casual sex with average and below average looking women, as long as they don't have to invest social and material resources in them. Resource investment is reserved for women they consider higher in mate value, and that will be the women who they consider well above average in physical attractiveness. But it is this aspect of male sexual psychology that supports the polygynous environment from a male behavior point of view. Women get pregnant and men do not. And this is one of the big reasons for differences between the sexual psychology of men and women. This is why women are more selective with whom they choose to sleep with compared to men and have higher physical and social standards when choosing a man. Getting pregnant means they take a bigger risk and pay a higher price for choosing a man of low quality. So they tend not to compared to how low men will go. Now, the key for understanding this is not to look at what the modern world is like with, you know, condoms and the pill and um, abortions and things like that. But with all our evolutionary history, that kind of contraception did not exist. So if a woman had sex with a man, there was always the risk of getting pregnant. If that was the case, then she would have wanted to be careful who she's getting pregnant for. Because first of all, you've got to carry that child for nine months, build it with your body's resources. Then when the child is born, you're breastfeeding, lactating, carrying that child around for two, three years. Men don't do all of that. Women do all of that. So it's a much bigger job for a woman to do. And of course, a woman is very limited in the number of children she can have. Where if a man has, you know, got a harem, he can have a hundred children. So a very attractive man throughout our evolutionary history, they tended to have a lot of children because they would be seeing lots of different women. Whereas it doesn't matter for a woman's got 50 men, it doesn't convert into being able to have a hundred children. You can only get pregnant for one or two men at the same time. Let's say if two eggs come out at the same time and she has sex with two different men, well, she can get pregnant for two different men at the same time. But for the most part, she can't do what a man can do, which means she has to place a lot more weight on who she chooses as a partner. It's just a much bigger gamble. Now, if you want to understand that in more detail, um, see this video I posted three weeks ago back on what supports the polygynous mindset from the female uh, point of view. Now, the two different kinds of mate preferences, um, so male mate preferences and female mate preferences, working together is what gives us this polygynous ecology that is developing in 21st century Western mating markets today. So if we look at female mate preferences, this is where Chad and Tyrone get their power from. So if we look at those physical traits that females tend to like in a man, you know, him being tall, you know, athletically built, broad shoulders, nice tapered waist, deep voice, masculine facial features. These are some of the physical attributes that we found women around the world um, prefer in a man. But also there are social aspects, social preferences that they like in a man. And this kind of separates women from men because men don't look for these social traits in women that women look for in men. Women tend to be drawn to social rank in a man. Research has repeatedly revealed women find prestige, success, rank, status, social position, you know, power, standing, a high place, more important than men did in a desired mate. And I'll do a video on why men don't really look for, you know, high educational and occupational achievement and income in women, the way women tend to be very attracted to that in men. There are some very good reasons why men and women are kind of different that way. And men don't really care too much about a woman's education and her income and stuff like that. I'm not saying they don't care at all. They do. But they rank, you know, a woman's physical attractiveness and her compassion, her femininity, how kind she is, how loyal and committed she is. You know, the things that from a character point of view, if, you, if he's thinking long term, what would make a good wife and a mother? He places those traits much more 
then you know what her occupational status is and you know what her income is they they just don't place a lot of great weight on that but women absolutely do now the way this would have evolved throughout our evolutionary history would be a woman having a mate that met those preferences who was loyal and invested in her and her children that woman has had a survival and reproductive advantage over women who don't have a man like that so the women who had a protector provider man like that they were winning they were better protected their children were better resourced they didn't have to face some of the things a woman who didn't have those things had and over many hundreds of thousands of years you get the preference for men like that because the outcomes for women who have a loyal committed man like that are just so much better and to be quite blunt women with such a loyal man today still have an advantage over women who do not have a loyal strong man like that beside her who's committed to her and will support her you know building a household and maintaining a family now early on before a woman gets to know them chad and tyrone have the appearance of this kind of man because they physically meet with what a woman likes you know attractive tall things like that and you know they've got the social and economic attributes that they like but they don't know whether the man is going to be loyal and committed to them and very supportive and things like that so he's got the potential to be that kind of provision and protector man but will take time to find that out so men with these good gene indicators the combination of physical good looks and a man who's doing well for himself socially displaying social dominance you know got some money in his pocket things like that they understand the the female attention they get so as we see here they're more likely to pursue a short-term rather than a long-term mating strategy and be reluctant to commit to one woman <clears throat> and to learn a bit more about that i've given you this study in red here attractive women want it all good genes economic investment parenting proclivities and emotional commitment now a woman can see the good genes right away and they can see whether the man's economically doing pretty well right away now whether he's going to invest in her materially economically emotionally that she doesn't know so she's not going to know the parenting proclivities and whether he's going to emotionally commit to her that takes time and the man is going to you know be strategic to these chad and tyros they'll tell a woman what they want to hear for a, quite a while and mess them around a little bit and then when they do find out you know many of them are not interested in the emotional commitment and investing in them that's when it can be disappointing very stressful um, for for women who involve themselves with these types of guys but these are the reasons these men um, behave that way it's to their advantage and because they're attractive on various levels they can afford to keep doing that so this is a comment from the book I just published um, between 2002 and 2013 men in the top 20th percentile of attractiveness enjoyed a 25 percent increase in their number of sexual partners men in the top fifth percentile enjoyed the most excellent sex lives overall as they increased their number of sexual conquests by 38 percent now they weren't exactly making more women here so if all this sex was flowing to the top it meant the below average looking guys the men of average attractiveness they were losing out on a lot of sex because it was flowing to the top to these guys in the top 20th percentile so as these men at the top were getting more another group of men were missing out and statistics bear this out as sexlessness has increased sexlessness has increased in men generally over this period of time and that is how polygyny works when the men at the top get more men at the bottom get a lot less now if you look at the date 2013 this is when the dating apps and stuff were just coming in so in the decades since then these numbers have probably gotten a lot bigger so it was already polygynous at this point but since 2013 it wouldn't surprise me if these numbers have increased by at least another 10 or 15 percent now because of how 21st century technology um as has appeared on the scene before 21st century technology these type of men would have to go to bars clubs pick up women on the street and on the job etc but with instagram social media and dating apps 
thousands of women are a DM or right swipe away. I, I just recently watched a YouTube video where this handsome Tyrone type dude, he right swiped a hundred times in less than two hours. That is a level of access to females that is unprecedented. They just don't have the time and energy to have done all that physically. But now with 21st century technology, they can do all that on their smartphone in their living room. So their combination of physical, social, and economic attractiveness makes them hard to resist because female hypergeny urges them to go after these physically and socioeconomically attractive men that satisfy much, but not all of what women desire in men, because women do desire loyalty and commitment and the investment of you know, their time and love and money and things like that. And Chad and Tyrone aren't doing that, but they use the hypergenous nature of women to reel in lots of low investment, casual sex before a woman finds out that the man is not gonna be really long-term committed to them and give them the type of relationship that they're looking for. So these dating apps give Chad and, Ch Chad and Tyrone more ability to attract females than at any earlier time in human history. And it's really screwed up uh, the dating mating scene. So if we return to this study I talked about now, so all of that, what you just went through is intensified and ex exacerbated for black people in America because they're in that 90% of them live in the low sex ratio ecologies. So this gives Tyrone an even, just an extra strength pimp hand to really attract a whole lot of women and play around with these women, give these women a really difficult time, but also because they attract so much more women now, the average guys are not having a good time either. And the below average guys in terms of attractiveness, they are really struggling. So this is how it's kind of a poor mating market for the majority of men and a whole lot of women as well. But Chad and Tyrone are just winning big time in this type of mating market that is now just a polygynous mating market. It's a combination of economics, of the 21st century technology now with the dating apps and Instagram and all of that. And also with the cultural changes because women, you know, some generations back, they were less likely to engage in casual sex with men, but, you know, through the sex positive activism, sexual revolution, gender equality culture, women are much more comfortable giving out casual sex, which plays into the hands of Chad and Tyrone. So again, this is another way that they're winning because of all of these factors working together, the culture, the technology, and the economic changes, which, all of which are, you know, detailed in my book. So, but if you want to learn a lot more about how the sex ratio, how the low sex ratio affects sexual behavior and really creates a big problem with the mating structure here with the black community in America, these are four videos on my channel from July, 2022. So if you go back and check out these videos, it will give you all the science on what this is doing with how it's created a whole bunch of dysfunctional sexual romantic behavior um, in basically anywhere where these low sex ratios take place. But of course I focused on the black community. So you can get in detail by looking um, at these four videos from July, 2022. So please like, comment if you like any more questions uh, on this video and go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell because i'm trying to put these videos up once a week uh bringing evolutionary psychology um, to our community and give you a better understanding of how this is reflected in our everyday behavior